Hello, people of the world watching car-related internet videos. Welcome to this. My 2UZ VVTi V8 powered 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica that is now at the stage of my favorite part of a car build wiring. If you're new and you'd like to get caught up on videos on this project, up above I compiled a playlist for you, or also it could be a friendly reminder that half of the condiments in your fridge are probably expired. <laughs> Let's get to work. What you're looking at right here is a silent oil pan. My alternator is right there, and this is a silent block where the exhaust manifold will go. You would think an RA chassis with a V8 in it would be super cramped and hard to work on. Passenger side. Take my header apart. Before I can get to wiring though, this needs to happen. Individually. Brand new Toyota Genuine Hardware. Obviously, you should expect no less from me. And, I scare myself. Give me that, give me that, give me that nut. Oh, it's over here. With copper paste. A little goes a long way with copper paste. You don't need much, that's for sure. Come on. A merge collector. That guy goes on like that. Oh geez, springs scare me. <laughs> there we go. This plus bell housing bolts equal probably not happening. I maybe should have tightened the hardware before putting all the pipes on, maybe. That nut right there. Oh my God, that is a really tough one to get to. You would think by how small this car is that headers on this V8 would be impossible to install. Can I get that? Oh yeah, I can get that one too. Another benefit of using a UZ V8 is the fact that there's no starter to have to hang off the side of the bell housing. Oh geez. The side that has the steering shaft has to be a lot more difficult than the passenger side, you would think. I don't know about this one. I know how many I ordered and they skimped me by two. So I'm gonna have to use two of the older ones and order two more. And the driver's side, no more difficult than the passenger side. That's what I call a well-engineered header. I was able to do every single nut with one 14 mil ratcheting wrench and it wasn't even that much of a struggle. Uh, I label stuff too and I still can't find it. I have like 63 comments about you should label your plastic Tupperwares. You should throw away your moldy ass thing of ketchup in your refrigerator. That's a clutch. Yup, this is it. Now as far as the flywheel and clutch goes, this is going to be a highly asked question. I've been asked it before about putting a W58 gearbox behind my 2UZ V8. Oh man, that was heavy, that was heavy mamba jamba. You, where are the holes? Holes. Just FYI, none of the products in this video are sponsored. That's why I'm not acting like a human pop-up ad on Instagram and spamming who makes it. In addition to the Loctite, it also came with fastener lube for the back of the flywheel bolts. That's something a lot of people forget to do. Some people say to use blue Loctite 242 to be exact, and others say to use red Loctite, and uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. I just need to get a couple started to suck this thing down onto the end of the crank by going in a crotch face pattern, cross, cross hatch, cross fade, crotch, cross fade. That was a band in the early 2000s. There we go. I have a severe problem with losing my flashlight because it's magnetic. I stick it to anything. Oh, wrong way. Put these all up here. Red Loctite. Red Loctite. Since these things are hardened steel ARPs, I'm not really afraid to use red Loctite. If it was just a regular hardware store bolt, then RIP bolt. Seventy pound feet. Okay, scotch bright like a diamond. What? Red scotch bright. I cannot wait to start doing paint and body work on my next project. Uh, wrap this up like a bean burrito. Someone caught that reference, then you're on fire. <laughs> Pilot bearing, I like to put a little dab of copper anti-seize on the outside. A little goes a long way. Ha ha. Ah, 
Ah, la soqueta, oh la soqueta, look at that. That'll do right there. Perfect. There's the chewer. The chewer. Back on the subject of the clutch and flywheel, the way that you end up destroying a W58 gearbox when you put a lot of power through it, torque actually is what does the damage, is by running a super aggressive grabby clutch. That will cause damage to a W58. So that's what I did. I paired an adequate clutch for this application so it'll provide some slip and not allow my transmission to explode. Shine bright like a flash bright. Okay, pulls. Uh, that looks like, are you going to stay before I go get bolts? I'm literally just going to use that bolt for now. In case you were wondering, I already brake cleaned the crap out of the flywheel because spotless. Whoa, check that out. My Loctite blew a bubble overnight. It's like got a little bit on the bottom. Whoa, Loctite. There's so much red Loctite all over this clutch, it looks like I, like, cut myself. Uh, baby. The following day, I had to get brand new hardware for the pressure plate. I didn't want to reuse old stuff, so. And it's only 14 pound feet. That's not a lot, but then I guess it's just pressure plate. Somebody's gonna say that this is on upside down because of the sticker. I'll wait for that to sink in. Man, something doesn't feel right about that only being 14. Yeah, uh, tech data says 14 to 19. I'm gonna go all the way up to 19. Clean off my blood splatter. La 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 la. They're listening to Crocodile Rock. I heard Crocodile Rock. <laughs> Where's the list box? Don't skip leg day. This is my freshly rebuilt Igene W58 transmission out of a non-turbo Mark IV Supra. Therefore, it is the best iteration of the W58 gearbox. In addition to having the gearbox rebuilt, I also had the gears cryo-treated in it as well. I had it rebuilt here in Tucson, a shop that specializes specifically in old school Toyota transmissions. So it was the perfect place to have it rebuilt. And the shop actually believes it should do just fine behind that 2UZ, especially considering I don't drift and it's not gonna be drag race dumped off rev limiter on slicks. In addition to the rebuild and cryo treating, I also installed a short shifter kit that will give it a nice crisp notchy feel. Now, even though I did already massage the firewall to make this thing clear, it's not enough. Yep, that's how you end up with a transmission on the floor. Oh my God, why are those so tight? That literally just took all that sound and just middle fingered it into my earlobes. All right, bell housing from 2UZ. I've already modified the bell housing just by removing these little tabs, but I might do a little bit more. This is gonna not be fun putting this transmission up in here. Top clearance. Sketchy, this is heavy. I'll do it on the very edge of the oil pan where it's the strongest. Oh, that's why. See this peg right here? My junkyard engine didn't have it, so this slid in no problem. However, on my dad's engine, that peg is present in the back of the block, so it's just not gonna make that happen. Well, that's kind of coming out. And this is how you hit yourself in the face. Coming out. Oh man. Got it. That was probably as awkward as watching a horse give birth to a ferret, but 
At least I got it out. The junkyard engine was a 2UZ. This is a 2UZ. It's the same bill housing. It's supposed to fit. What the hell is going on here? That peg is tweaked over to the side. I don't know if you can tell. That's why it's not going on. Now that I think about it, the other engine didn't have any pegs, so there was only one holding this in. Oh yeah. There. It's lined up and it hits. The problem with beating the crap out of that transmission tunnel is if you try to gain clearance on one side, you take it away from the other side because it's all one continuous piece. And no, I'm not cutting that up. I got it stuck on the pegs. There we go. Luckily, I don't have to massage much. Oh, wow. That gained a ton. So I'm putting the transmission up. Do, 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 do. Lots of room. Lots and lots of room. I got miles of room on the side of that now. Perfect. And I know someone's gonna make a comment about it. There's not much movement in these engine mounts, so don't have to worry about that. This area of the very top of the bell housing, however, still needs a smidge of clearance. Yes, it is a structural area, but when I say the tiniest bit, I mean tiniest bit. While I refuse to cut up the firewall, I don't have any problem lightly taking off a tiny bit of material from the ribbing on this bell housing. Like I said, lightly taking off a tiny bit of material. So don't freak out, I'm not chopping this thing to pieces. Oh, way better. Holy crap, that made a huge difference. Or the flashlight. A few over-exaggerated wobbles of the bell housing to simulate excessive movement of the engine and transmission shows that it clears. And it doesn't hit anywhere. And it's also, it's spaced about that far from the engine, which is even closer to where it will be. So I call that good. I'm gonna get a whole finger above that rib right there on either side. Good. Here's some 80 grit so this doesn't look like it was cut by a beaver. Even though no one is ever going to see the top of the transmission bell housing unless you disassemble this car, it doesn't mean it doesn't deserve attention. I like to try to put forth some effort into every single part of the entire vehicle, regardless if you'll see it or not. So you know that I did put this thing in my homemade vapor blast cabinet to clean up the aluminum. And instead, it just made it look like it's been sandblasted. Now it's very susceptible to dirt and grease. Reason being is I bought the glass bead media from Boat Dock Freight. And if you go cheap, you get cheap results. I can't afford a professional vapor blast cabinet and none of the companies that make them are willing to sponsor one. So with that said, I gotta stick this where you can see it. Uh right there. If you ever notice watching some of my car reviews where I show aluminum suspension components and they have stamps of weird long acronyms on them, those represent the different types of metals that are utilized in construction of those suspension components. And depending on whether or not they are pure aluminum or if there's other metals mixed in like magnesium for instance, they can discolor if you use harsh cleaners on them. That worked absolutely amazing. Just wet sanding it with the 360 Scotch Bright, 360 grit ish, well, 320, 360, made it have that metallic sheen, that slightly little bit like eggshell, but a gloss to it that I was looking for. Downside of doing it this way versus purely off of blasted media is a blasted media would give you more of a consistent sheen to it. But because I use a red Scotch Bright, it doesn't really have any shiny spots. Shiny. It's very. It's very dulled and looks even. The only trick is gonna be trying to make the transmission case match this bell housing since they're from two different types of transmissions. Creepers, they're not just for people. Give it a scrub first.
Oh jeez. It kind of matches. It's a lot cleaner than it was. That's important. The steel core though, I got a trick for that. If this seems excessive to you, good. This piece in the center originally when this was brand new was painted black. You can kind of see right there. That's not dirt, that's paint. Shout out to you in the comments section if you saw this coming. You know me well. <laughs> Has nails, still can't peel tape. Well, the gasket provides a little nice barrier on its own too. I don't have to be perfect with the tape. It's super windy and spitting rain outside and there's a car in the paint booth, so I gotta get creative here. Uh, that's gonna let wind come in. Painting out here is not gonna work. Okay, we'll do it live. Help it stick. Start off a little bit of primer. Regardless what I say, I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments telling me I should just spray paint this transmission silver to make it look new again. And well, a little bit of satin black high temp roll bar and chassis paint. That's a thing. That's not what I'm going to do. I prefer to have a raw aluminum finish. After two coats, take this off. That gives it some inconsistencies and imperfections, and that to me looks real because that's how a brand new transmission looks. I would say that looks 10 times better than when I started, but I went and ordered a high-end 2K clear coat designed for this application, put over engine parts, and uh, when that comes in, I'll shoot the entire thing with it. It'll be nice and protected. It's specially formulated not to yellow. I get to spend the next couple hours playing musical cars in here and cleaning up for a car view. And then I got to edit this video. So it's up for you guys tomorrow morning. And then I also have to do all my notes for the car review. So I got a lot of work to do and it's already five o'clock in the evening. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.